What up, what up, Wimbush here. And with the recent update of Cineware, we can now take rich shift materials with subsurface scattering into Unreal Engine 5. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So I'm using the latest version of Cinema 4D 2024 for this. And to get started, you can see I have the simple scene right here. I just have this scan from 3dscans.com. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna use this same exact model. But if I pull out of my rich shift camera, you can see I just have a redshift area light. It's just generic, nothing too crazy going on, pointing at my sculpture right here. And so to get started, I'm gonna come up here and just make a new material. So I'm gonna come down here to materials, make a standard material, and then I'm gonna double click on it. And then I'm gonna drag over my note editor over here and click on standard material right here. And then I'm gonna come down and let's look for subsurface scattering, which is right here, subsurface. And it's as easy as just turn this all the way up. So I turn this all the way up to one. And that's basically all you have to do to activate it. So if I come over here and I actually take my material, drop it on my sculpture here. Now you can see we have subsurface scattered on our dog here. So if I come up to render, come down to render view, I'm going to turn this on and just get the bucket renders going. And after a few moments, you can see that we have our rendered here. Now inside of our redshift viewport with subsurface scattering. Now, I'm not going to go in full detail, but if you wanted to come over here and maybe just change out some of the colors, like come down here to radius and maybe change this one out. Let's go with maybe like a blue hue. So something like that, maybe baby blue. And then down here under color, maybe let's come over here. Let's make this maybe like a purplish color, something of that nature. So I'm going to come down here, make it purplish somewhere around there. And then come back inside my viewport and let this render out. And then once this is rendered out, you can see that we're getting some really cool shaders going on in here with the subsurface scatter now if we want to bring this over to unreal it's as easy as just coming over here i'm going to exit this out i'm going to hit Control d on my keyboard and down here under my attributes window i'm going to click on cinderware now if you watch any of my stuff in the past you already know what to do here but i'm going to save polygon cache click this on save material cache and then maybe let's make this 4k texture 4096 by 4096 at 16 bit and I'm not gonna do any animation, but I'm just gonna make this one frame anyway. So down here at the bottom in my timeline, I'm gonna hit zero just to make this one frame. And then I'm just gonna save this out as a regular Cinema 4D project. So I'm gonna come over here to file, come down here to save project. And then I'm just gonna save this out as a C4D file. So I'm gonna click on save. And that's basically it. That's all we had to do. Now, in order to get this into Unreal Engine, you want to make sure that you're using the latest version of the Cineware plugin, which if you go to maxon.net, you should be able to see under Cineware. So if you come over here to products, come down here to Cineware, you're going to find the Unreal Engine Cineware plugin. And once you're on this page here, you come over here, the Cineware installer, and then you will install the latest version. Now, for anybody that's having any issues installing Cineware, I do have a full tutorial strictly dedicated on how to exactly get that installed, but it should be straightforward. Now, I'm inside of Unreal Engine 5.3, the latest version. In order to get this started, first, we want to make sure that we have the plugin for Cineware activated. So I'm going to come up here to edit, come down here to plugins. And then once you have this up in the search bar, I'm just going to type in Cinema. And then you want to see Cineware by Maxon. Now you want to make sure that you're using the latest version if you want subsurface scattering. So this version right here, 2024.9, would be the latest version. So anything with this version number and up, this should work for. Now I'm going to exit this out. And in order to bring in my Cinema 4D project, I'm going to come over here to where we have this plus symbol right here. I'm going to click on this, come down here to Datasmith and hit File Import. And then I'm going to find that Cinema 4D project that I just saved out, which is this one right here. So I'm going to open this up. And then right here, I'm just going to save it into my contents folder. It's a default one. I'm going to click OK. And that's going to bring up our import options in which I'm going to leave everything on here by default. And I'm going to give this a moment to import everything. Now, that might take a few moments depending on your system specs. But once it's imported, if you look over here, I'm going to come down here to my content browser under animation. I'm going to double click on this. And this is going to be my timeline. And I'm going to look through my camera. Now, looking inside of my camera, we can see how everything's supposed to be looking. You can see we have subsurf scattering inside of Unreal Engine, but we can take it a few steps further, starting with the material. So if I click on my item here, let me scroll down and let me look for my material, which is right here. So if I double click on this, let me scroll this over a little bit. And if I come down here under the attributes, you can see that we now have attributes for subsurface. So let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see what's happening inside of real time inside of our viewport. So let me scroll this over like so. 
And I'm just gonna change out the weight right here. So let me move this up a little bit. And now you can see inside the viewport how everything's looking. So you have complete flexibility over that. If I move this over a little bit, you can see that you can use weight maps and color maps if you have those as well. You can offset it, scrolling over like this. We can change out the colors. So these are all the same attributes that we had inside of Cinema 4D, but now we're just switching them inside of Unreal, which I always thought was pretty neat how we have complete control over a lot of those aspects in there. So let me actually shift this down a little bit more. Let me just take it back down to zero, somewhere around there. Scroll this up like so and click on save. And now you can see how we're getting the subsurf scattering inside of our viewport here. Now, if I come over here to my area light, my red shift light, it does work a little bit different than it does inside of Cinema 40. So if I scroll down here, you can see these are gonna be the light settings that are gonna best replicate Cinema 40. It's gonna change it over to Lumen, but you can always change these over to these other methods if you want. If you come down here under intensity, this is gonna control your intensity of your light there. So you can see that the units might be way different compared to Cinema 40, but that's because it has to do a conversion once it brings it over to Unreal, but that's basically it. So you can play with your red shift lights in here. You have your red shift camera, and now we have red shift subsurf scattering. So I know a lot of people have been asking about subsurf scattering inside of Unreal Engine, and now we finally have it using the red shift materials. It's as easy as just making it inside of Cinema 4D, bringing it into Unreal, and just playing around with it from there. So if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.